This lab has to deal with Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle has to do with equilibrium reaction. So what is an equilibrium reaction? Well, equal, an equilibrium reaction or any reaction that is at equilibrium does not go to 100% completion. So normal reactions will go to reactants to products completely. Not so in an equilibrium. In an equilibrium, you'll have at the end of the reaction, at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, at the end of whenever the reaction is complete, you'll still have some reactants left over. So you can have a 50-50, maybe the equilibrium is skewed towards more of the product side, maybe the equilibrium is skewed towards more of the reactant side. We don't know, it depends on what type of reaction you're talking about. So equilibrium reactions, by virtue of the fact they do not go to completions, you usually depict them with a back and forth arrow instead of an arrow that goes single-handedly in one direction. Now coming back to Le Chatelier's principle, what happens if you mess up a reaction that is settled at a particular equilibrium? Well, what it does is that it compensates. So let's say you have an equilibrium that shifted towards one side or the other. If you perturb it, the equilibrium will offset whatever your perturbation that you've done. So if you have a reaction that's at an equilibrium and you add more products, it will offset and shift towards the reactant side. Okay, it's basically you're externally or you are perturbing the equilibrium reaction in some way. And Le Chatelier basically says it counterbalances whatever externality that's done to the equilibrium. So uh, instead of me articulating it, we'll practice this uh, by doing five different equilibrium reactions and seeing, noticing how shifts are changing when you mess up the equilibrium one way or the other. Okay, so our first reaction here is reacting iron plus three with uh, uh, biocyanate. So actually it's going to be uh, iron nitrate iron plus three. Okay, so don't worry about the nitrate, that's called a spectator ion. And potassium thiocyanate, SCN minus. Uh, don't worry about the potassium because the potassium is a counter ion. So I'm just going to follow the procedures in the lab handout for those of you that are virtual. So 20 mils of DI water goes into a 100 mil beaker. Okay, we're at 20 drops of our iron plus 3. Again, the nitrate is just a spectator ion. And this is qualitative. Uh, so, uh, well, it's quantitative in the sense I'm adding 20 drops, but we're really looking for qualities. So it's also qualitative. 20 drops here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Uh, I'll call that twenty. It should be all right. Twenty drops. Okay. Let's record the color here. Uh, yellowish, okay, it has a yellowish tinge, and then we're going to add 20 drops of our potassium thiocyanate. The minute we add the iron plus 3 with the thiocyanate, SCN minus, okay, we're starting an equilibrium reaction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay, so 8 more or so. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right, the reaction has taken place. This is the iron thiocyanate complex. You can read about that in your lab handout. It's a complex ion. Very beautiful um, blood red color. Or maybe not so much like blood, but um, a dark red color. Now we're going to perturb the equilibrium. Okay, we're going to add some of this, shift the equilibrium. We'll add some of that, shift the equilibrium. By doing that, we're going to um, take three mils of this mixture, three mils, three mils, and uh, three mils here. This, uh, this test tube number three is going to be just a negative control of water, and one and two are going to be the equilibrium perturbation. So uh, three mils in each of these test tubes, and then we'll test them out by messing up or perturbing, excuse me, the equilibrium. All right, so took three mils from our beaker and to three different tubes. So let's, um, let's just do water here. Okay, number three, this is called a negative control. Uh, so we're adding 
uh, reagents, but we're just adding water. We expect nothing to happen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty or so. And um, all right. Well, that's water. Nothing's happening. All right. We're going to perturb this equilibrium by adding some iron 3 nitrate, the iron plus 3 ion. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to add the 20 drops, and then um, we will see what we get by some shaking. So first the 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 8 more. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And we're going to add um, the thiocyanate to tube number two. And then we'll compare. Okay, so tube number two, here's my 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is the tube that has iron plus 3 in it. Okay, let's always compare it to our controls. And this is the tube that has um, the potassium thiocyanate. All right, so um, here we can see this is after some mixing. You want to put it uh, by a white background or hold it against a white piece of paper, you can clearly see that uh, tube number two is a lot darker than tube number one. Tube number two had the thiocyanate added, tube number one had the iron added, tube number three just had water added, it's what's called a negative control. So the equilibrium has definitely shifted and in our post lab you'll determine where it shifted to, whether it's towards the complex ion or towards the reactant side. All right, so reaction number two is reacting nickel nitrate, so nickel. Uh, plus two is going to react with this ammonia, which is a weak base, a weak source of OH minus. And that's going to form the complex ion nickel ammonia. Um, and the NH3 is complexed six times. You can check out the formula of that complex ion in your lab uh, handout. So we're going to add some of this nickel nitrate to a clean test tube. So let's just add, um, you can notice here the green color, light green color. So we'll just add uh, let's just add maybe two swigs of this. Okay, we're being very qualitative here. And by adding some of this NH3, okay, we're going to form the complex ion. Maybe two healthy swigs of this. You can see that uh, we definitely, against the white background, we definitely see a uh, green tinge to this. And I can add some more. Uh, here we're just forming the complex ion with the nickel and the ammonia. So total of three swigs. Again, um, being very qualitative here. So we have a light green color. Right? So we have a little bit of a greenish tinge. It may be hard to see, but we're going to now neutralize some of that NH3 with acid, HCl. This is a strong acid. So let's see what happens. Again, report what you get. a couple of more swigs here. Maybe hard to see from the side view, uh, but look at the top down. Okay, if you look at the top down, you'll see that it's turned green and uh, the equilibrium has shifted. All right, so this reaction, reaction number two between the nickel and the NH3, may be a little hard to see for some of you uh, folks that are doing the lab in person. Uh, but uh, notice here that I swapped the system with NHCl and put a whole bunch of HCl in it. And you can see the equilibrium shifting back to the nickel, to the nickel. Uh, remember the reaction is nickel plus ammonia forms the complex ion. So it's going back toward the nickel side, which is uh, sort of this mint green color. And you can actually see that uh, if you really, really push, I'm really pushing the system here in the equilibrium reaction because it's so subtle and may be hard to see. Uh, but hopefully you can um, visualize, and it's going to be better in person, how, um, especially at the top part, the meniscus, um, it's becoming more green, more like uh, the nickel uh, in your nickel nitrate. 
All right, reaction three, demonstrating Le Chatelier's principle. We're going to test the equilibrium of this indicator called methyl orange. So before we do that, we're going to make a, a dilute acid solution and dilute basic solution. I already have here 10 mils of water, so I already put 10 mils of water there, and then we didn't film it. Uh, we're going to put um, four drops of this six molar HCl, so four drops of this. One, two, three, four. All right, shake it up. Okay, so now that acid is dilute. Good shake. Do the same thing here. Uh, four drops of six molar NaO8. Four drops here. This will be our dilute basic solution. We already have it in 10 mils, uh, in 10 mils of water. One, two, three, four. Okay. Shake that up. Okay, so four drops and 10 mils of DI water dilute. Four drops, 10 mils of DI water dilute acid, dilute base. Now we're going to do our actual equilibrium demonstration. Here is our indicator methyl orange. And I already got one mil of water in here, so we didn't film that. And we're going to put in four drops of this dye. The dye is called methyl orange. Actually, it's called an indicator. So four drops, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you notice here that the one mil of water plus four drops gave it this color, bright yellow color. And we're going to test the acid-base properties of this methyl orange indicator. Uh, let's do two drops of the dilute acid. Okay, here's my dilute acid solution. Okay, ready, one, two. So from yellow, oh wow, that's really pretty, okay. From yellow, we went to something that's very nice red in color, pinkish red. So you record the color that you think it is. I don't know what that is, violet red, pink red. Okay, whatever it is, it's pretty. And now we will add some of our basic solution. Okay, so here's the, um, drops of NaOH in water. So we'll add four drops. What's going to happen here? One, actually we're going to add, um, we'll add some drops. Two, four, okay. Oh yeah, okay. We have definitely changed the equilibrium. <laughs> okay, so back to yellow. All right, so we can go back and forth, back and forth together. So I think the protocol tells us to um, add some of the acid. Okay, so the reaction is shifting. And now we're back to uh, our previous color, which was that pinkish red sort of thing. Okay, so this methyl orange indicator is uh, shifting. Uh, in equilibrium between uh, the acid and the base. You add an acid, the equilibrium goes one way. You add the dilute base, the equilibrium goes another way. And uh, you'll have to, in your post lab, go into the details of this reaction. All right, our reaction here, reaction number four, is we're going to precipitate calcium hydroxide and then measure the equilibrium of the calcium hydroxide precipitate adding some acid base reagent. So first let's precipitate the calcium hydroxide. We're going to take five mils of the six molar NaOH. So uh, get your graduated cylinder here, measure about five mils. Here's about five mils of that. Pour it in our beaker. Then five mils of calcium nitrate. All right, this should precipitate out. I'm just going to uh, use the, this one mil pipette just do it about five times. So this is about one, two, uh, this is three, four, and five. Okay, so this precipitate here is calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide. So that's a nice white precipitate. We are going to filter it. All right. So you guys remember how to filter this from gravity filtration. So uh, by half and then quarter. Okay, maybe we can do one more. All right. 
testing again. So our filter paper is folded. We got a funnel and an Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, let's wet this to make it stick. Protocol tells us it's going to take a long time for this to filtrate. We want to get some of this calcium hydroxide precipitate on the surface of the filter paper. So uh, that may take a while. So while this filters, white precipitate to come out of this filter paper that we can collect, we'll move on to our fifth and final reaction. Then we'll come back to this and perform the equilibrium of the solid precipitate. All right, back to our calcium hydroxide precipitate. Okay, looks nice and beautiful. All right, so uh, we'll just wash this a little bit here. So uh, a little bit of a wash, okay. I'm going to collect as much as I can on this filter paper. So um, actually, we don't even need this filter paper. I'll just collect it here. It's a little bit wet, but that's okay. All right. So here's my calcium hydroxide. The, uh, I washed a little bit of it, so um, some of the water has drained out. Just cleaning it. I got 10 mils of water here, so we didn't film that. I'm just going to scoop up some of this white pasty stuff and pour it in here. I try to get as much of it as you can. Precipitate is a little wet because I washed it with um, some swoops of water, but it's still there. Okay. All right, so my calcium hydroxide, it's this milky white precipitate. And uh, we're actually at an equilibrium. Uh, this is called a sparingly soluble solid. Calcium plus hydroxide gives you calcium hydroxide solid precipitate. And we're at an equilibrium back and forth. So we're going to test this out. First thing we're going to do here is add some HCl. Okay, so what the HCl is going to do is the HCl is going to neutralize the hydroxide. All right, so the HCl will neutralize the hydroxide ion, so it removes the hydroxide ion from this equilibrium. Okay, so about two mils according to the protocol, and uh, I think that's close to two. Maybe a couple of more drops will get it to two. All right, so we got two mils. So what's happening here, calcium plus hydroxide is going to this precipitate, calcium hydroxide, but we're neutralizing, taking some of that OH away with this HCl. So let's see what happens. Okay, I predict that precipitate should dissolve. Okay, and uh, should we see the precipitate getting less, less cloudy? Okay, and uh, it's becoming, uh, I know it may be hard to see uh, visually, but um, some of it has definitely dissolved, right? So um, if I add more acid, you'll get more dissolution, uh, but it has turned lighter. Uh, what happens if we add 5 mils of NaOH? So remember the equilibrium. Actually, if you can look down here, you can see it's, uh, it's dissolving. Okay, it's more liquidy. Okay, less cloudy. Uh, what happens if we add 5 mils of the 6 molar NaOH? Calcium plus hydroxide goes to calcium hydroxide. You're adding more OH. Okay, the sodium is the spectator ion. So. Um, what we would expect is more precipitate is what I would predict. So five mils according to the protocol. So one, two, and you can see here the precipitate is really forming. Um, you know, one thing I would recommend if you're doing this live is kind of look overhead, okay? eye over the um, beaker or the test tube and you'll see precipitate kind of forming right, uh, right overhead. And it's become more cloudy. I would predict that that makes more sense. Uh, adding acid, you're dissolving the calcium hydroxide precipitate. Adding the counterpart base, you're actually creating more precipitate that is calcium hydroxide. So the equilibrium is like this. Add an acid, you dissolve the calcium hydroxide. Add the base, you're adding and creating and precipitating more of the calcium hydroxide. All right, here's our fifth reaction demonstrating Le Chatelet's principle. It's the equilibrium between cobalt and um, 
chlorine. So again, nitrate is our spectator ion. Cobalt plus two is what we're worried about. And here the Cl from HCl, uh, that's gonna form the complex ion. The formula is in your lab handout. So let's uh, do five drops of this. Light red color here, pinkish red. One, two, three, four, five. Five drops. Okay, now we're going to add five drops. We're doing this in the fume hood because this is concentrated HCl. There's some nasty stuff here, so you want to be as quick as possible. And um, we're going to do five drops of this. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. A little bit over five, but that's okay. Right, you notice here that adding the acid, we kind of went to a bluish green, okay? Some shaking can get this to settle into a particular color. Right, let's add some water here, okay, as per the protocol. Five drops of water. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit more. All right, so we'll record the color. The color here is a pinkish red. I think this equilibrium has trouble making up its mind. <laughs> Here's our reaction. I think the complex ion is here. It's this color, this pinkish red color between the cobalt, CO plus two, plus the concentrated hydrochloric acid. We added some water to sort of settle this. And now we're gonna change the temperature and see what happens. All right, so we're out of the fume hood. I've done a little bit of shaking tapping, tapping to get it all mixed. And I think this has settled to the color of the complex ion with the cobalt and the chloride. We're checking the temperature effects of this equilibrium. So we're gonna put this in a, a hot water bath here. Okay, and uh, let's see if the pink up uh, any color change. Let's just wait a couple of minutes. So remember initially we're at pinkish red. And um, yeah, in the hot water bath, I don't know if you can see that. But uh, from pinkish red, it went to, what is that, purple violet, whatever that color is. <laughs> okay, so heat has definitely changed this equilibrium. Okay, temperature effects of this equilibrium between cobalt and chloride, that complex ion. Right, yeah, okay, wow, this is a nice pretty color. Okay, uh, what happens if we go from the opposite of hot, which is cold, so we're gonna put this in an ice bath. And let's see what happens. Here's some water with some ice in it. Ah, there you go. <laughs> this is, okay, we're back to that cobalt chloride, beautiful pink red color. Uh, the equilibrium has shifted. Now let's just for kicks, let's put it back in the hot water bath. Okay. Okay, yep. We're back to that purple, violet purple color. And yeah, we can go back and forth, back and forth on this. All right, so uh, the purpose here is to look at heat, okay? How temperature is changing the equilibrium reaction.